Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. In honor of Earth Day, we are going to have a wonderful cooking demonstration from a medical doctor named Dr. Sarisha Potluri, who was referred by another medical doctor who actually did a cooking demo on the show a little bit while back. She is going to be making, I don't know what the Moringa is, but a Moringa Indian cucumber dal, as well as a very popular dessert that sounds amazing called beetroot halwa. Please welcome to the show, Dr. Sarisha Patruri. It's very nice to meet you. Hi, Chef AJ. Thank you so much for having me on your show. It's it's an honor, I have to say. <laughs> oh my, no, the honor is all mine. I, I'm always fascinated when doctors are plant-based, especially when they get the no oil piece like you do. And I, so I'd love to, if you want to, even before you do the cooking memo, just tell us your story. How did you become plant-based and why? Yeah, definitely. Um, this was in 2014-15. I I have been vegetarian for past 20 years, but then in 2014-15, my blood pressure um, was around uh, 180 by 90. And then I felt ashamed being a medical doctor and seeing that blood pressure numbers, I'm definitely overweight at that time. And then I stumbled upon um, nutritionfacts.org uh, by Dr. Michael Greger. So that's what changed my life, I have to say. Um, I lost 45 pounds. My blood pressure numbers came down to 110 by 60, 70, um, those ranges. And uh, yeah, and then um, it's, it's a game changer, I have to say. It's like it has helped my family members, my friends, and my dad actually um, uh, reversed his diabetes. I can say that because it's more than a year his hemoglobin A1C came down to, you know, 5.2 and lower. So yeah, it's it's a blessing. And um, from common sense perspective, I believe that um, the prevention should start from the food we pit, put on our plate. That's that's where it should start. So, so I'm guessing you didn't learn most of, most of this in medical school. None of this, actually, none of this. And all these herbs and spices, actually, we were taught in our Indian kitchens. And um, it's amazing how uh, some of the benefits of all these amazing foods has already been known, but um, not used wide, widely. So now, now we have like, in the annals of uh, PubMed, in all the American, um, you know, journals, the health journals, we have all this information uh, available, and especially nutritionfacts.org, you have ton of information there. What Dr. Michael Greger and his team does is picks all those studies and does like a meta-analysis, and then he puts out all this amazing information, and uh, it's amazing what we can learn even if you can't go to PubMed and do that, at least go to nutritionfacts.org and we can learn a ton of information. Yeah, absolutely. We so appreciate his work. It's hard to believe you were 45 pounds overweight. You wouldn't happen to have a, a picture handy, would you? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I mean, I'm tall. I, I'm five foot seven. So it's hard for people to notice that I have been overweight when I was overweight. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's hard to believe. So yeah. we, we already have a question that popped up in the chat from Linda Middlesworth, who's actually a PCRM cooking instructor. And uh -huh. she says she has a lot of clients who are from India and she has a hard time getting them off ghee. Do you ever encounter that? Yes, I. It's um, ghee gained all this uh, hype for wrong reasons, you know? Maybe like, they used ghee in Ayurveda just for the spices to get into our body like a like a, a transport system because all these medicines that's used in Ayurveda are fat soluble and ghee was the only fat available at that time. So maybe they used a little bit, tiny bit of ghee to, you know, use as a transport into our system. But then um, it's filled with oxidized cholesterol. And uh, most of my plant-based workshop participants now know they can talk about ghee for lengths, uh, how ghee is 
filled with oxidized cholesterol and it's so bad for us. And I have to tell you something, Chef AJ, in spite of using ghee, um, all these spices, I think they're counteracting the oxidative stress caused by ghee, you know, because um, yeah, definitely. That's only because it's promoted widely in India. That's the reason why like, you know, ghee is so popular. And now thanks to all these uh, plant-based Indian doctors, now slowly, even the participants, people in general are uh, reducing the intake of ghee. So there are a couple of people watching, like Rebecca says, what is ghee? It's G-H-E-E. -E. It's, a, it's a dairy product, right? It's, it's a dairy product and it's nothing but they take butter and then, um, they even call it clarified butter. So what they do, they boil, I, I wouldn't say boil, but then heat the butter at a very low temperature for almost an hour. Okay, so what happens? The butter will slowly melt and then they will filter out the residues. And um, because in developing countries, it's hard to store the butter, right? because the, we need refrigeration, we need all this cold temperature. So the reason they made ghee is like, they can store it at room temperature. So the ghee is not refrigerated because it's converted almost like oil. On a slow heat, they heat the butter almost an hour. And I can't imagine, um, all the, uh, you know, pro-oxidants that are being created in that process. So, yeah, definitely, definitely ghee has gained hype for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. It's great that you know about the oil piece. A lot of doctors don't seem to understand that, even if even some vegan doctors, why it's so important. Maybe you could explain. Yes, I have to tell you this, um, growing up in India, uh, my parents used to attend a workshop. Uh, I, I shouldn't say workshop, but it's like a program done by a naturopathy doctor. His name is Dr. Mantena. Um, he is very close to the city we live in, right? So he was the one who said like 20, 25 years back. And even before that, he said, no oil, please. Don't use oil. And that's when we already know that oil is not good for us. Um, because oil is not just calories, but think about as like, oil is nothing but like purified fat. I mean, if you take an olive and then press it, get rid of all the fiber, get rid of all the nutrients that you're getting olive oil, that too. When it is processed in cold pressed, maybe you will get little little bit of vitamins, but um, pound by pound, oil is the most calorie dense food available <laughs> for us. So yeah, we are, we are better off not using oil. And I have to tell you, it's very easy to cook Indian food without oil. I mean, um, once you try, it's, there is no going back um, because oil is even blunts the taste buds um, it coats the taste buds and it will blunt the flavors. And with all the spices and, um, you know, herbs we use in Indian cooking, we don't need oil. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I say as a chef. I tell people that when you use oil, it does, it coats the tongue so that you have to use so much salt just so you can taste your food. Exactly, exactly. And I have to tell you a funny story. Like I was talking about um, our plant-based Thursdays group, right? Um, where we have like at least four groups and thousand members in there. So once they started doing oil-free cooking, a couple of them, they, the feedback they gave us is, oh, food is too salty. <laughs> so, so what you said is absolutely right, Chef Eti. It's like um, once you get rid of the oil, you won't need that much salt actually. Yeah, that's that's great. I'm so glad you learned that. I, the doctor that you learned that from is he still around? Is he still practicing? Oh yeah, yes. He's still he's um, he has an ashram. You know what is ashram, right? Um, it's like it's, a temple, right? Sort of. Yeah. Like um, it's um, so it's not a temple, but then in India, um, the retreat is also called ashram. Right. So he has this place in a couple of cities in India 
and then uh, it's it's kind of true north variant you know where they do water fasting where they do mud baths where they do only raw food and uh, people go there and lose weight and come back get rid of their chronic diseases and come back and i i think he is great the the only thing is they still allow little bit of dairy because in india it's hard to get non dairy products as much as we get here but that too he says only if you can't um eat you know without oil add little bit of dairy product you know so yeah. yeah can you please explain to me in india they don't eat cows correct because they're sacred right yes yes but if they're sacred why are they steal in their milk which is for the babies and i don't know how they're treated in india but in the united states that's the most inhumane treatment of any farm animal practically is a dairy cow i know that's i mean not many people know what happens in the dairy farms but um, 25 years back or like few few uh, 10 15 years back like most of them they used to have like a cow in their in their uh, backyard um, and then they treat the cow or buffalo as their family member so once the baby drinks the milk whatever is left the family used to drink not the other way not the other way around so they do uh, they worship the cows uh, they actually uh, um, you know make sure the baby cow gets the milk because they think it's a sin not for the for the baby cow not to get the milk and the family to get the milk so it used to be like that um, and uh, unfortunately the the western civilization <laughs> and all the demand for milk has shifted this and uh, you're you're absolutely right dairy cows are treated so bad so bad and talking about that i just want to um, um mention this like india right now is in crisis with covid so i just want to say please please take care everyone wear a mask you know i i tear up when i talk <laughs> it's so bad in india right now yes so sorry when when did you where and when did you practice medicine when you were because right now you're doing something different right yes yes um right now i am not doing family practice anymore i used to do that and now i am only doing workshops and plant based cooking workshops as well diabetes and weight loss reversal workshops and uh, most of my participants are from india and there are participants from dubai and other countries as well so i do these workshops in um, my own language which is telugu so so that the parents who can't understand english can easily understand this and my focus is on lifestyle medicine you know i'm a lifestyle medicine coach as well uh, so i i try to use that skill and uh, help as many people as possible that's fantastic uh, is your immediate family plant based as well yes yes and my parents it was very hard to change my parents but um once they know the benefits of plant based diet the diet the results it sets itself speaks for themselves like how my mom's hdl was coming down to 40 uh, i mean what medicine can do that right uh, this plant based whole food plant based no oil diet can help to bring your ldl sorry I, did i say hdl i'm sorry yeah brought uh, my mom's ldl to 40 and uh, it's it's amazing what plant based diet can do and my dad's um, hemoglobin a1c also got uh, down and uh, you know we are enjoying the benefits of plant based diet so yeah <laughs> that's fantastic i you know indian food is so popular and it's so delicious and if people only knew how good it could taste plant based and without oil yes yes that's the that's the real <laughs> real indian food actually Well you're going to be writing a cookbook soon aren't you? Yes. <laughs> yes, Chef AJ. I really want to do that and I'm in the process and then uh, meanwhile if anyone wants to check the recipes uh, my web blog is also there plantbasedlosangeles.org. 
That's great. Well, when the book is out, we'll have you back and promote it for sure, because people are always asking for recipes. Yeah, thank you. I know we are making something in instant pot, so I want to jump into the recipe so that we don't run uh, behind. So what I'll be showing today is uh, Moringa dal. So one second, let me, can you see the instant pot? I can. Yes. So right now I'm going to, one minute. Sorry. <laughs> so this is what is called Indian spice box. Um, you can see all the spices in here, the center being turmeric and the whole world knows why turmeric is good for us. The curcumin in turmeric has been shown to have amazing benefits when it comes to cancer, when it comes to heart health, wound healing, and all these benefits. So we don't need much. We don't need much of these spices. That's why we only use a tiny teaspoon. And these spice boxes also come with these tiny spoons because all these dried herbs and spices are so concentrated, we don't need to use a ton of them. If we can use in our cooking, that's more than enough. These are mustard seeds. We can even take them out like this. So these are mustard seeds. These are fenugreek seeds. Fenugreek um, uh, has been used um, in Indian cooking for so long. Um, they have blood sugar lowering uh, ability as well, as well as there have been some research showing like it has anti-cancer properties. And then cumin seeds, Middle Eastern um, cooking also uses a lot of cumin seeds. Um, it's used a lot in Indian cooking. Cumin seeds have been shown to have aspirin-like properties. So salicylates, um, cumin seeds have a lot of salicylate. It's um, a teaspoon of cumin seed can have a uh, you know, a lot of salicylate. So, and then these are black seeds, nigella sativa. I think Dr. Michael Greger made them popular by saying that, you know, these seeds can help in weight loss. Um, so we have been using these in Indian cooking for so long. And uh, these are coriander seeds. Coriander is nothing but cilantro. So this is also so beneficial for us. Cilantro has been shown to um, remove the heavy metal toxins from our body. So along with having blood sugar lowering uh, properties, it can even help with uh, removing heavy metals. And this is red chili powder, cayenne. And this is like, um, some some of the ingredients we use in Indian cooking. So right now I'm gonna show what we will be using today. So for making this dal, I put uh, instant pot in saute mode right now. And then I'll slowly uh, add all the spices, a little bit of mustard seeds, and the heat will make them splutter. So Dr. Putmarie, Susan, who is watching live says that there is a, uh, a vegan chef or cook that's Indian named Richa who says that without oil, the flavor doesn't carry well. Can you please comment on that? Um, that's a myth I have to tell you, Chef AJ, because it's been so long we have been cooking without oil and uh, actually the flavors are enhanced even without oil. It, it only takes a little bit of time for our palates to adjust. As I was telling uh, in the starting of the show, the requirement for um, even uh, uh, salt reduces because we are not using oil. So, um, and all these uh, seeds and spices, they also have tiny bit of oil in them. So I added some mustard seeds and then adding some cumin seeds. So except for baking, I don't measure my cooking or follow a recipe, but I write it because uh, not many people know how to cook without recipe, right? So, and fenugreek seeds. If you don't like the bite of the fenugreek seeds because um, they're bitter, you can use a little bit of fenugreek powder. We don't need much, half or one fourth of teaspoon, you know? And 
I will add uh, turmeric, but not yet. So at this point, you know, it's heating up and these are curry leaves. Um, you know, we, we grow curry leaves in our garden or most of the Indian stores carry the curry leaves. So what we do is add a few curry leaves, take from the string and add them. And uh, if, if it is very tender, we can even add the stem. So curry leaves give such a nice flavor for our Indian dishes, especially in dals, um, curry leaves is a must. So I have my, so since um, it's steel, I will be using the steel spoon to saute. So let's saute these for I one. I've seen those leaves. Can you get them at a regular grocery store? Curry leaves? Yeah. Not in regular grocery stores. Almost all Indian stores carry them. Wow. I got to see if there's an Indian store near me. I'm in the desert. I have, oh, that's very interesting. Helen wants to know, she's in Canada and where can she order an Indian spice box that is authentic? Um, see, uh, the spice box comes like this, but we fill the See, I fill what I normally use, right? So I use mustard seeds, cumin seeds, you know, black cumin seeds and coriander seeds, fenugreek seeds. So this is what I fill my spice box with. So depending on what you are using, you can, you can customize your spice box. So they come like this for convenience. So, but the box itself, uh, most Indian stores carry them. And uh, I'm sure Amazon should have one too. Yeah. And there are some places where they sell all the filled uh, spice boxes as well. So definitely Indian store is the place to go. Yeah. Uh, Hope says, is there a substitute if they live somewhere where they cannot find those leaves? Um, dried, dried curry leaves is okay, but the fresh curry leaves gives such a nice aroma. Um, yeah, dried curry leaves you can get in most Indian stores or even online. Yeah, definitely. I will, I will uh, look at your show later and I'm going to answer, okay, where, where the places are. I'm going to search and I will answer that. Thank you so much. Yeah, and now since we see like the spices are little toasted and the aroma is so good, I bring uh, some onions. And add them. Indian cooking, especially dals, require a lot of onion and tomato. So, and then here you can see garlic, right? So I'm going to leave a few garlic pieces and add at the end. I'll tell you the reason for that. Um, if you want to regain the health benefits of the cooked garlic, just the way you add mustard seed powder in cruciferous vegetables, you add few pieces of raw garlic or raw garlic juice in the in the final final uh, step of your cooking. Um, it's amazing. Um, I already chopped this garlic and exposed to air for ten minutes, and then um, in dal garlic goes very well. There are a few dishes where garlic goes well. Uh, one is dal. So as I said, I'll be leaving few garlic pieces to add at the end and then let's saute. Are instant pots popular in India? Do people have pressure cookers? Yeah, now a lot of people are buying instant pots and uh, pressure cooking is one of the most common methods of cooking in India actually. So yeah, it's, it's, it's so popular to use pressure cookers in India. And now with the invention of electric pressure cooker, it's, it's the safety, right? Um, you can put your dal or any curry or chana or, uh, you know, kidney beans, curry, anything. Uh, instant pot is so good for Indian cooking, so convenient. Since we are cooking in instant pot, we don't need to, uh, you know, saute them for that long. 
And this is the turmeric I'm buying nowadays. I just want to show. I always recommend uh, everyone to buy organic turmeric powder um, because turmeric uh, that's available in most Indian stores has been shown to be contaminated by heavy metals, especially lead. So there have been instances where lead poisoning was linked to turmeric use at home. So please, please be careful when you're buying your turmeric. Make sure it's from a reliable source and make sure it's organic. So since we all will be eating this, I'll be adding a teaspoon of turmeric. And then to enhance the bioavailability of turmeric, we add a little bit of black pepper, but this turmeric, it says like it's fortified, fortified with 95% curcumin complex and black pepper extract. So if I'm using this, I don't, I don't add black pepper anymore. So, so as you can see, onions and garlic and the curry leaves, they're sauteing nicely. At this point, I will be adding some tomatoes. There's a question from Rebecca. Where did the myth start? Do you know that oil is so good and necessary? Do you have any idea? I figured it probably started by the olive oil industry. <laughs> I know. I, it's, it's like, see, um, when we go back 70, 80 years, I mean, there were in rural India, at least my great grandma used to cook without oil because it's not widely available. I mean, it's expensive, first of all, to make oil because we need an oil industry or, you know, someone who make oil, right? So all her cooking used to be either chutneys or whatever she used to make is very little oil or no oil, actually. So... Yeah, I would blame industrialization. And uh, yeah. Because throughout most of human history, we didn't consume oil. Right? Yeah. So yeah, I, I think they felt it's convenient to make the, make the olives into olive oil or, you know, coconut into coconut oil. Um, all this for, for selling it's convenient for selling. And uh, the star ingredient in this dal is cucumber. These are Indian cucumbers. You can always use regular American cucumbers. So they look like this yellow, round, and sometimes they have like green stripes. And um, once the summer comes, many of my friends grow them at home too. So these are Indian cucumbers and uh, it looks, it looks like a grapefruit to me. It does not look like a cucumber. <laughs> I know, I know, right? This is this is the stem. Yeah. So this this is how the the pieces look like. Once we peel the cucumber and then, um, you know, make sure to taste the cucumber. Some of the cucumbers can be bitter. We want them to be tangy. Then it'll taste good. So approximately, this is from two Indian cucumbers. For example, if you don't have an Indian stores or if you can't find an Indian cucumber, you can always use the regular American cucumber and sprinkle some lemon juice on top and leave it aside to get the taste of Indian cucumber. So Indian cucumbers are tangy and they give such a nice texture also to your dal. So I'm adding all of those. And these are all non-starchy vegetables. They are like, I say it's free food, eat, eat as much of non-starchy vegetables as, as possible. So, so far, whatever we added is all non-starchy, which are the least in calorie density, right? So we added onion, we added garlic, curry leaves, tomatoes, and Indian cucumber. All of them come under low calorie uh, foods. So these you can use as much as you want, including green leafy vegetables, right? So. Let, let's uh, saute this for a minute and I'm gonna show you what lentils I'll be using today. Um, whenever possible, I try to sprout my lentils and if I have a lot of sprouted lentils, I freeze them. So that's why they're looking like this. These are uh, sprouted uh, red lentils. 
And lentils are supposed to be used with the skin on. Um, so these are sprouted lentils. So uh, I like to use uh, in dals or whatever cooking, it's, it's better to use sprouted lentils because it's easy to digest and much more nutritious than non-sprouted lentils. So these are approximately two cups of sprouted lentils. I'm gonna show you guys how the raw form looks, okay? So this is called whole masoor dal. This is, this is how it's available in Indian stores. It's called whole masoor dal. You can use any lentils available to you. This is how the dry lentils look. Um, Indians use a lot of lentils, but the problem is they're using the lentils with the skin off. Most of the lentils you find in Indian cooking nowadays is without the skin. So uh, I, I want to tell everyone, like, it's, it's important to use the lentils with the skin on where the nutrition and fiber is. So make sure to use the lentils with the skin on. Okay, we added lentils. Let's mix everything here. Oh, this already looks so good. So one other ingredient we add, we like our food tangy. So there comes tamarind. So this is tamarind. Tamarind is a fruit. It has a nice sweet and tangy taste. So it's, this is what is used in Indian cooking. Um, I don't know if you know, like um, most Indian snacks are eaten with uh, tamarind chutney. Along with the green chutney, they eat tamarind chutney, tamarind and date chutney. So these are tamarind ribs. They are extracted from the fruit. And what I did is I soaked the tamarind and soaked them in hot water. So this is how it looks. And um, you can get tamarind paste as well. Um, tamarind is very high in vitamin C and it's shown to cleanse the liver. So it's good for someone with fatty liver to use tamarind actually. So I'll be adding, I like to add, instead of just uh, extracting the juice, I like to add the, the ribs, soaked ribs like this so that I don't want to lose the fiber component. The most important nutrient that we all need is fiber, not protein. <laughs> so, so I added some tamarind and some juice. And then, and then we will, you know, add some water, not too much, just, you know, a cup, a cup of water. Okay. And then we didn't add red chili powder yet. So we will be adding some red chili powder. So with all these spices, we don't need to use salt. And also eating plants is great, but um, remember like we don't live in wild or we don't live among plants. We live in homes, we live in cities that are surrounded by all the pollution. You name it from morning to evening, if you see how much how many chemicals you encounter from the toothpaste, from the body wash, from the shampoo, for the conditioner or hair products or makeup products. All these can be detrimental to our DNA. So what do these spices do? They have DNA protecting properties. So eating plants is great. I would recommend eating whole food plant-based diet but try to incorporate all these amazing DNA protecting spices in your whole food plant-based diet. That way, the unavoidable toxins that can damage our DNA can be protected even a little bit. Like even a little bit of protection you get is a protection, right? So that's where the spices come. They not only flavor your food, but they can help with the with curtailing the DNA damage caused by all this environment, uh, environment where we, it's unavoidable, right? The cell phones, who knows what they are producing? Um, the cooking food on high heat, definitely not good, but we have to do it, right? So in order to um, 
help uh, reduce the DNA damage, adding spices like turmeric, um, fenugreek, and then spices like cumin, mustard, as well as coriander, they all can help uh, reduce the DNA damage. So you must be thinking, I said Moringa dal and where is Moringa? So this is the frozen version of Moringa. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the fresh one. But uh, what we do is when we get fresh Moringa leaves, we freeze them, we wash them and freeze them so that we can use for later. Um, and this is the dried form of Moringa. As you can see, you can wash moringa leaves and dry them under shade or in sun. And then, you know, these are potent uh, as well. So if you can get fresh moringa leaves and um, you have a chance of freezing them, freeze them um, and then use. So what I'll be doing is I will be adding the moringa leaves after uh, the instant pot cooking is done, like just, um, the heat from the cooking is enough. So what we will do right now is like close the instant pot. Sorry. And then I'm putting it in a high pressure manual for, for 10 minutes. Okay. So I'll take away the spice box and I'll try to move the stuff a little bit. Is that a six quart or an eight quart that you're using? Uh, this is a six quarter, I guess. Yes, yes, it's a six quarter. Yeah, six quart uh, instant pot. Yeah. Now, yeah, I'll just move the, move. So I decided to make the beetroot halwa as well in the instant pot because we are already settled here, so why move the cameras, right? So we can happily make uh, beetroot halwa in instant pot. Sorry, sorry for the noise. <laughs> so this is a three quart instant pot. It's like so convenient. My son, um, who is in college, also has one instant pot. So yeah, he it's it's so convenient. Uh, I mean, by now your audience are well aware of Instant Pot, right, Chef AJ? <laughs> oh, I would hope so by now. It's my favorite <laughs> kitchen appliance. My second would be my Breville air fryer. Do you have an air fryer by any chance? Yes, yes, I have one. Yeah, I have an air fryer. So yeah, definitely all the uh, delicious Indian snacks can be easily made in air fryer. The samosas, the pakodas, you know, all these cutlets, the uh, aloo tikki, all these delicious Indian snacks can be made in air fryer. So, so sorry, I thought I, okay. I kept the instant pot in saute mode. While it gets hot, I want to talk quickly about Moringa. Uh, why Moringa is important. Um, I'll move it a little bit here. So why Moringa is important. It's, um, first of all, it's cheaply available especially for people in India, in tropical countries. And it has um, a compound called moringin. It's an isothiocyanate. So it's kind of sulforaphane equivalent um, that's available in broccoli sprouts and kale and cauliflower and uh, all these uh, cruciferous vegetables, right? So moringa has a compound called moringin, which is isothiocyanate. So it's oh, the people in tropics, they can't eat broccoli. They can't, uh, what I meant by they can't eat broccoli, it's not available widely, right? They can't grow broccoli sprouts. So instead they can rely on the native foods like Moringa. So it's, um, there was a research paper in the annals saying like, it's the wonder food for reducing cancer. They, they hyped it so much and named it as wonder food to reduce cancer. Um, I don't want to give that much hype, but uh, definitely uh, Moringa leaves as well as pods. I'll show you, sorry. I'll show you the Moringa pods. These, this is the fruit of Moringa. It's like, we call them drumsticks. I mean, they're, of course, they're cut in a small 
uh, pieces. So how we eat these Moringa pods is, uh, is like we use them in soup, in dals and sambar. It's a very common Indian lentil soup. And um, this is eaten just like artichoke, where you chew and throw away, right? So the, the fiber, you cannot swallow it. You just chew it and then throw away. So it has been shown to reduce blood sugars. Moringa has been shown to reduce blood sugars. Um, there, there is one doctor called Dr. Rhonda Patrick. She interviewed Dr. Jed Fahey. He is from John Hopkins. He's the Moringa guy, I have to say. He's the Moringa doctor. And she wears a continuous glucose monitor where she mentioned like using Moringa powder in her smoothies has reduced her blood sugars. Isn't it amazing? I mean, why not use this? Why, why don't you uh, make uh, use of the cheaply available uh, green leafy vegetables, especially in India, you know, the pollution is so horrible. The pollution in India is so horrible. One second, I'm gonna close the seal. I mean, when you think about it, almost all medicines, or at least originally were created from plants. From plants, yes, yes. And uh, as I was saying previously, that's how it should be. The prevention should come from the food we eat. And um, in the whole food plant-based diet, try to use the variety of foods available. So I was talking about Moringa, right? So not only bl controlling blood sugars, but it has also been shown to be excreting the, the air pollution compounds like benzene from our system. So there's such a great alternative, especially in developing countries where the air pollution is horrible. So why don't we use cheap alternatives like these, like Moringa in our diets, right? So everyone wants to use the exotic broccoli, um, avocado, which is not ready, readily available in India, actually. So it's always better to use native fruits and vegetables as much as possible. And I would recommend everyone to use Moringa. Having said that, uh, pregnant women and uh, uh, someone trying for fertility uh, should always talk with their doctor before using uh, Moringa. And, and also someone using insulin, someone using uh, diabetes medication should definitely talk with a doctor if they're using this Moringa a lot because it's been shown to reduce blood sugar to that extent. Not because it's bad, because it works that good. So we don't want any fainting episodes. So yeah, so if you are using any of these uh, plants, um, please always uh, talk with your doctor because this is not a medical advice, okay? Uh, um, what else? Yeah, what I, I wanted to show like for someone who can't get hold of either fresh Moringa or dried Moringa leaves or the Moringa pods, you know, there, there is a lot of uh, Moringa powders available and always buy organic. I'm not endorsing any product, but I'm just showing like this is how the leaf looks. So, and some of my friends, they have big Moringa trees in their backyard and they send the leaves. So that's how I got the leaves and I was able to freeze them. So, and uh, many Indian stores carry them. And in the Westlake village, the farmer's market also carries Moringa leaves. So on Sundays. Um, <laughs> Bullient, and please tell me if I'm pronouncing your name right. Is it Bullient or Bullient? He wants to know, what do you think of the quality of the Moringa powders that are sold in the West? Yeah, that's, that's definitely something we have to look into. And Dr. Jed Fehe, he recommends Kuli Kuli is the, is the brand he recommends. But um, yeah, so yeah, so, they, so maybe it was well studied and looked for. So to my workshop participants who cannot, uh, acts, uh, who, who have no access to Moringa leaves or dried Moringa leaves, I tell them about Kuli Kuli Moringa powder because it's been uh, recommended by John Hopkins Moringa expert. <laughs> so yeah, so now let's uh, 
lower the camera and I'll show you guys uh, how I will be making beetroot halwa. Beetroot, uh, that's what we call uh, beets in India, beetroot. It's all European uh, uh, names, right? <laughs> so uh, this is grated beetroot. So this is a very simple recipe. Halwa is like, um, it, it, it tastes nice and gooey and um, so sweet. The texture of the halwa is what people like it. It's nice and gooey. So in order to get that, um, I adapted this recipe. Beets are already very sweet, right? And when you shred them like this, they give such a nice texture. So I shred them in food processor and then I will be using, this is approximately two cups of beets. So just saute them for a little bit. We all know how good uh, beets are right they produce uh, you know such important compound in our endothelium nitric oxide right so and also beets have been shown to excrete the bile um, and then prevent cancers so and I love beets because of their color you know especially in deserts we uh, uh, for last Diwali, uh, Diwali is known for, it's, a, it's an Indian festival, festival of lights. It's known for making sweets, right? So for last Diwali, I think we made all beetroot um, sweets, beetroot barfi, we used tofu, beetroot and dates. So, so in this beetroot halwa, there, is, there are just like two or three ingredients. Uh, one is... Uh, grated beets and then the other one is medzul dates the dates uh, the medzul variety is little softer so it's easy to cook so that's the reason I chose medzul dates if you have regular dates you can soak them in water and make them soft so once the beets uh, you know saute for a little bit we will add uh, a little bit of plant milk Chef AJ, I'll step out for a minute. I forgot the plant milk. I'll, I'll get from the pantry. That's okay. I'll just talk to everybody. I'll Thank just you. Guys, uh, who's on the show tomorrow at 11. Uh, she, her name is Dr. Jyothi Rao, and she's going to be talking actually about fasting and her book, Body on Fire, which is about inflammation. She was on before, but with another doctor this time she has her own episode so please come back we actually have two shows tomorrow and then at 2 p.m we have kathy freston who has a new book 72 reasons to go vegan so we have a double show tomorrow and so bullion do i pronounce your name right i need to know i hate I'm back <laughs> all right great welcome back people are asking though if they can't find the leaves how much curry powder would they use um just a teaspoon one or two teaspoons yeah oh no 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 no. they're saying they're they're thinking like curry leaves equal to curry powder no no curry leaves is entirely different from curry powder because curry powder is a mixture of turmeric uh cumin seed powder uh, and then uh, coriander seed powder. Coriander seed is nothing but cilantro seeds and a little bit of uh, cinnamon sometimes if you're making garam masala. So curry leaf is different from curry powder. So curry powder has all the spices like turmeric, you know, and cumin seed powder and coriander seed powder. As you can see, the beets are nicely cooking as soon as they hit the heat. So at this point, I'll be adding a little bit of plant milk. We don't need much just for them to, you know, get, get closer. So I'm using oat milk from Trader Joe's. The ingredients are just oats and water. So when you're picking your plant milks, don't use the milk that has oil or sugar in them. Instead, just look for two ingredient um, 
you know, milks. That's better. <laughs> and actually, you know, today they're having a big sale on the Nutramilk machine for Earth Day, $100 off with free shipping. And then they don't even have to buy it. They can make it from the oats, from the walnuts, from this, anything they want. Wow, that's awesome. I think I have to look into that, AJ. Thank you for letting us know. Yeah, it's just, I think it's the sales for three days, $100 off. And it's not just a, a, a machine that makes plant milks. You can use it as a blender, as a food processor. Mm -hmm. So pretty nice and nut butters as well yeah so we added some plant milk and then now we will be adding the dates i didn't even cut them i just opened and removed the pit from the dates and then i'm adding them sometimes medzul dates can be very sweet so see if you can handle that much sweetness and um, depending on that, adjust the dates in your recipe because beets are again very sweet, right? So, and uh, the most important thing in these uh, Indian sweets is uh, what we add in them, the flavoring. I'm just, okay. okay. Yeah, the flavorings we add in the Indian sweets is what is what gives them such, you know, amazing flavor. These are cardamom. Cardamom is a must in Indian cooking. Either you're making chai or you're making any dessert or, you know, a kheer. Kheer is one more dish we make with uh, uh, a lot in Indian cooking. So cardamom is a must. Um, and, then, um, and then saffron. All these spices, um, they come with, as I was talking before, they come with protecting our DNA. Even though we use them in very, very tiny quantities, they're, they're good for us. So they not only make us not use the ghee or other uh, heavy creams uh, that are in dairy products. Instead, if you use these spices, you don't need much, just a little bit. And this is the cardamom powder, I just... Uh, powdered some uh, cardamom so that it won't get into your bite. So I'll add these at the very end. And what else we need? Some mixed nut powder. I like to use only raw nuts, no roasted nuts. We don't want any more acrylamides in our food, right? So uh, fatty foods should not be heaten on very high heat. So roasted nuts uh, is not good. This is raw almond powder. These are the only nuts I have today. You can add walnut powder. You can add mixed nuts powder, whatever you want. And you can even avoid this. If you, if you don't like nuts, you can avoid this. Or if you're allergic to nuts, you can avoid this. And uh, sorry. <laughs> That's the problem with beets. You have to be careful. It'll color everything. <laughs> So, so you, you didn't cook the beets first. You sauteed them. They were raw beets. Right. Yeah. Right. They, they are raw beets. Yes. Yes. We don't need to cook them that long. Just five minutes. Since I'm doing an instant pot, um, it's taking a little longer because the heat from the stove will be a little, you know, <laughs> more compared to instant pot uh, heat. So as you can see, it's nicely coming together. And we will let that uh, uh, milk also cook a little bit. So don't add too much milk because again, for that milk to evaporate, you have to cook long, long time, right? So at this point, I will add this almond powder. What I did is like I coarsely ground some raw almonds so that I will have control on what kind of almonds I use, if they're organic or not, if they're raw or not. So we mix them and, uh, and once we add the cardamom powder, then it'll the whole <laughs> house will smell like I'm cooking Indian sweet. Yeah. So I have a question here from Lydia. How does the nutrient content of sprouted lentils improve compared to non-sprouted lentils? Yes, definitely. Um, sprouted food, um, it has more vitamins compared to non-sprouted because um, 
what, what happens once you sprout the food, all the vitamins uh, that are needed for the plant to grow are coming out as well as for digestion. Um, it's easy to digest when we have uh, sprouted food. So if someone can't uh, take lentils or beans, try using sprouted variety. Of course, I always recommend cooking the lentils or beans um, because raw can have, um, first of all, there are some beans like kidney beans, which should not be eaten raw at all. Um, so yeah, sprouting will improve the digestion as well as improves the nutrient uh, profile of the beans or lentils, so. Terrific, thank you. And Amber says, do you have any chutney recipes? Tell her to please make an Indian whole food plant-based SOS free cookbook. I think it's in the works, Amber. Yes, <laughs> yes. Chutneys is like a regular in our household. So I just want to see like what's going on with the dal because I want to show, oh, okay. Yeah, so, so as you can see, the halwa is almost ready. Look how nice and colorful it looks. So at this point, I will be adding some cardamom powder. Um, Cardamom is a very potent spice. I find that if you use too much, it just, it's not great. No, it'll make it bitter. So don't use too much. And add a little bit and then mix it. And then add saffron. Saffron is such an amazing spice, especially um, if you have a family history of Alzheimer's or if you worry about dementia. A depression, I think this is a spice must have. You don't have to use a ton of it, even a little bit. That's how we use in Indian cooking. Almost all Indian desserts, they, sorry, <laughs> they require, uh, I mean, they have saffron in their, you know, recipes, almost all of the Indian desserts. And it adds such nice flavor and saffron has been um, used, still being used. They say like for pregnant women, they mix the saffron in milk and give it to them. So I'll be adding few strands of saffron and then the halwa is done. I don't like to cook too much because I want to retain the benefits of the beets as well as dates. So, so remember not to add too much milk because in order to evaporate the milk, you have to add, I mean, you have to cook longer. So it has such nice gooey texture because of the dates. So I let it cook like two more minutes. And um, there, is, uh, there is no Indian superfood that is as good as amla. And this is my favorite, favorite, favorite superfood. Um, <laughs> so these are the amla we get in Indian stores. They're available in freezer section. I'll show you how they look. These are the amla pieces. And uh, they have such a nice aftertaste. Uh, when you eat, it's little uh, astringent kind of taste. Uh, you might feel it's a little bitter, but it has a very sweet aftertaste. So believe it or not, the, the naturopathy doctor I have been talking about um, in India, he recommends dried amla pieces. These are dried amla pieces. He recommends these for someone addicted to smoking. So if they have an urge to take a puff, he asks them to chew on these amla pieces like a distraction. And in his retreat, at, at least he, he has shown that it worked. So why not use it? There is no harm in chewing on, you know, dried uh, amla pieces. As a matter of fact, it's all good. Um, amla, again, is uh, an amazing uh, food originated in India. Um, it has been shown to control blood pressure, 
control blood sugars, reduce cholesterol, and also prevent cancer. So there are many reasons to call it a superfood for all these benefits. And if you go on nutritionfacts.org or PubMed or go to any journal and just type AMLA and its health benefits, you can read all about it. And uh, it can be taken in many forms. For example, this is what I, it's so convenient when you get in the powdered form. As I said, I'm not recommending or promoting any brands, but I'm just showing what I get for myself and my family. So this is organic amla powder I get and just mix a teaspoon of it every day in water and drink it. And some people like to drink it in uh, smoothies. And many of the plant-based doctors even have their own brands. Dr. Christy Funk, she sells Amla in her, on her website. So they know how important the Amla is. So as I was talking before, like we are bombarded with all these chemicals every day. Um, and then I think I can off the... So we are bombarded with all these chemicals. So why don't we use uh, substances like amla, moringa, which have been shown to, um, you know, reduce the cancer risk. So uh, in developing countries by 2030, 70% of deaths are, will be related with cancer. So why don't we curtail that, prevent that with the foods we use? predominantly plant-based, but then use the spices and foods like this. I don't want to cherry pick and say like, oh, you can eat whatever you want and eat amla. It doesn't work like that. Even for any other foods, don't, don't think like, oh, I will eat whatever junk I want, but then I'll take moringa, I'll take amla, I'll take turmeric. No, it won't work like that. It's like in the whole food plant-based no oil diet, add these to get an extra benefit to protect your DNA. You know, why don't we use all these uh, amazing spices and uh, things available to us? So I try to grate these uh, uh, amla pieces and add in my Indian cooking. You know, we can add in chutneys, we can add on brown rice. We make this rice called lemon rice. I make it with brown rice or sometimes with millets. So what I do is I take, I thaw these frozen uh, amla pieces and then I, I grate in the food processor or in blender and I add on the top. So you're getting the fiber, you're getting all the, even the taste is so good. As I said, it has an aftertaste. Um, it's so good. And uh, talking about on Earth Day, we should definitely talk about millets. Millets is something we should start using. It's, they, they have been using in India for so long because these are gluten-free and most importantly, it takes a very less water and resources to grow millets. So it's the most sustainable form of grain and uh, let's all promote millets and uh, millets are very good in fiber because um, the, the way we process the millets, especially if it is hulled millets, pearled or not good. Pearled is like more fiber is removed. Hulled millets are good. So we can, we can you know, cook millets and use that instead of rice, wheat or whatever thing and we can rotate. There are various varieties of millets. As I said, it's the most sustainable grain to grow. So especially on Earth Day, uh, it's important to promote this. It can help farmers, it can help our land, and they have been shown to improve blood sugars. So there is one um, doctor. It's delicious too. It's so good. I'm going to show you how it looks once I cook. I, I know that I'm making dal today. So my family likes to eat dal with millets. So, so I made this. See, this is how it looks. <laughs> yeah, I, I made it and kept ready so that I don't have to worry about lunch. <laughs> so, yeah. I have a few questions if you don't mind. Uh, there is one from uh, Mariah. Any recommendations on where in Los Angeles to find fresh Moringa? 
Um, there are a couple of Indian stores who sell Moringa and there are a few farmers market, markets where they sell Moringa. One in Westlake Village. Um, I go to the vendor and I say, when are you bringing Moringa? And uh, they, they tell us like next week we can get Moringa. So especially in Southern California and Florida, I think it's easy to grow Moringa because of the weather. Yeah. So you can contact uh, Indian stores like where they sell Indian groceries. So there are some um, Indian stores who sell Moringa regularly. Great, thank you. And Alka says, how do we join the diabetes reversal program? Um, you can contact me on my website, on my blog, or um, I will leave my email if anyone wants to contact and my Instagram, I, you, you can message me on my Instagram handle, city underscore health foods. So if anyone wants to join, please, yeah, thank okay. you. Fantastic. Is the, is the dessert served warm, uh, cold or at room temperature or maybe uh, all both ways? Actually, I like it cold and my husband likes it warm. So when I make this and prepare it and keep it in the refrigerator, um, we, uh, he likes to eat it a little warm. That's how the halwas are traditionally eaten, but I love it cold. <laughs> yeah, this, this looks, uh, you know, this is so satisfying because this is gooey, gooey like halwa, but again, no guilt. So, yeah. If someone couldn't eat nuts, could they put maybe flaxseed in instead or just omit it entirely? Uh, we can omit it entirely, but yeah, I'm like you, Chef AJ. I love flaxseeds. Flaxseeds and everything, anything. So, yeah. So, yeah, but not in the sweet. It might... Uh, I never tried actually. Yeah, they or can try. I think chia seed would work better because yeah, chia, chia seed, seed might, might make it real, real nice and yeah, right? yeah, I think yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. So I'm as you were asking, I'm thinking chia seed would be a great idea. Yeah, I think so too. But Do we have time to plate them and show? Oh, or? absolutely. You have all the time in the world. I don't have another show today, so just, okay. I've got to be done by five p.m. Though I got my comedy class today. Uh, yeah, I have. I have class at uh, twelve p. Sure. Yeah. So okay, yeah. I have a question. And again, bullion or bullion? I don't know. I feel so bad. You're going to email me how to pronounce it because I don't know what you meant by the umla or whatever. I'm terrible at this, even though I was a speech major. He wants to know, could you please share your thoughts on Tulsi, the queen of herbs in Ayurveda? Oh, I love Tulsi. Uh, it's like, it's in my backyard. I can quickly run and pluck and show, but I don't want to interrupt the show like that. But yeah, Tulsi is a great herb. We, we uh, worship Tulsi in Hindu, in Hindu culture. Um, we worship Tulasi, we worship Amla, we worship turmeric because those are all like health foods. There is a reason why they do that because Tulasi is an adaptogen. It has been shown to repair our DNA. So I, especially now during COVID time, I would recommend everyone to eat a whole food plant-based, no oil diet and add substances like Tulasi, the Tulasi leaves, you can add in hot water and drink like a tea and then use amla. Amla has been shown to, um, you know, thin the blood uh, in a way, how should I say that? It's, uh, it's compared to blood thinning drugs. Amla has been compared to blood thinning drugs like, uh, like uh, you know, aspirin and Plavix, um, but without the side effects of bleeding. Okay, so especially now in COVID times in India, please everyone try to use, uh, you know, try to go on whole food plant-based, no oil diet, reduce oxidation as much as possible because COVID is pro-oxidant condition. It's there is pro-oxidation going on in COVID and uh, try to eat foods that can thin your blood like amla, garlic, you know, all these amazing uh, foods that can help with uh, blood thinning. So yeah, Tulsi is great. Yeah, thank you for asking actually. That's, uh, that's um, one more uh, superfood I should say from Indian, uh, um, you know, uh, culture. Yeah. That's great. The, the doctor that you keep talking about in India, by any chance does he speak English and would he come on the show? He sounds amazing. 
Yeah, he, I can contact him. He would love to come. I can contact him, Dr. Yeah. Mahina. He can speak English, but- well, that, that, I mean, because I don't speak it. That'd be fantastic. Um, P.S. says, if you chew the dried amla, do you spit it out afterwards? No, no, don't spit it out. No. Oh, it's, um, it's so, um, where, where did I put my amla? Sorry. And just to let you know, Susan says, this doctor is absolutely wonderful. I agree. What a, a wealth of information. And she can cook. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I love to cook, Chef AJ. It's my passion. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and talking about Amla, um, once you start eating it, slowly you'll get that aftertaste of sweet. You have to experience that, actually. Uh, especially with dried Amla. Uh, as I said, if someone is, uh, for someone uh, who is smoking and hard to quit, try chewing on dried amla. Yeah. And the doctor in India, Dr. Mantena, he um, has been running these programs for past 30, 30, 35 years. There are so many people who go to his programs, get better. And he actually recommends only raw food for some of the people and water fasting and then yoga yoga is the big part in his um, in his programs oh here they are there are amla pieces so <laughs> they are nice and crispy because they are they dried very well but um, yeah so can you, can you or have you ever cooked millet in a rice cooker for people that don't have an instant pot rice cooker yes yes they're uh, did Would it be I, the same? You know how like rice cookers come? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, actually, my mom cooks in rice cooker. She doesn't have an instant pot. She is in India right now. So she cooks in rice cooker, actually. Yeah, one is to two water, just like rice. But millets, we soak overnight to remove the anti-nutrients. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, I didn't, I didn't realize that. I never heard that you had to soak millet overnight. Yes, it's recommended to soak millets, lentils, all these things overnight, beans. Wow, see, I learned something every show. So Vanita says, I found the amla powder extremely bitter. I'm uncertain how long it takes to make a change in diabetes, but after taking it daily for two months, there was no downward plunge in my numbers. It, you have to do more than just take amla, right? You gotta be eating a completely oil-free, whole exactly. plant-based diet in addition. So I don't know if, if you were doing that or not. Yeah, that's what I tell my uh, workshop participants. Don't think there is a miracle food ever. The only miracle food out there is plants, okay? So try to eat whole food, plant-based, no oil diet, and add all these, you know, additives, the good additives, so that it can help repair our DNA, help a little bit more with the process. So, and not only that, uh, spicing up your food with all these uh, spices can make it easy to eat, right? So, Chef AJ, if you keep talking, I will, um, I will just bring a bowl. Absolutely. And um, absolutely. <laughs> so, how many of you guys have soaked your millet? I didn't know that. Sharon McCray, are you watching? I've never soaked my millet before. I wonder if it actually has to always be overnight or if it could be just a few hours if you forgot to do it overnight. <laughs> Yeah, six to eight hours is enough. Yeah. So this is how beautiful it looks. Oh my God, that looks amazing. I mean, I'm that would be, and it's not that hard to make. And I think I even have all the ingredients right now. It's 10 minutes recipe, I'm telling you, Chef AJ. And um, everyone in my friends and family love this. Yeah. You know, but I think I only have cooked beets right now, but. And I wonder if it would work with cooked beets. I just, that's what I happen to have. And that's why. The thing with this recipe is if you grate the beets, um, that texture helps with the taste as well. That's what I noticed. Instead of making a paste, instead of like just pieces, grating the raw beets in the food processor, it gives like long strips, right? Like the texture. And even the fiber in the dates, when you, when you are like remove, uh, when you tear apart the dates, how you find the fiber. So all this will give that gooey texture. That's what I noticed. Oh my God, that looks so good. So this is done. Let's see. Yeah, the, the thing with instant parts is like, 
it's so convenient, but if you want to show on time, it will take a little longer. <laughs> That's okay, because we have so many questions. Bullion says, is it safe to consume Tulsi daily, especially for men's health? Mm, one minute, Chef Yeah. No problem. Uh, I have a question from Gina and Alka when you have time. Yeah. Um, see, I am not an expert in Tulsi. I know it's good for us, but I'm not sure if um, it has any negative health benefits for men. But my, I mean, many of my family friend, family members, they drink Tulsi tea every day and. They, they drink it, especially when they have cough or sore throat, you know, uh, so I'm, I'm not sure. Sorry, Chef AJ, I can find out. And get... that's, okay. that's okay. I yeah. certainly don't know either. Um, Alka says, you are an amazing doctor. Can you let us know how you started the microgreens in your garden? Oh, okay. <laughs> I have to talk about microgreens. Uh, Yes, these are the microgreens and there are like a ton of them there. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> yeah, my son, he grows them and he sells so that he can raise money for animal charity. So it's his work, uh, but it's very easy to grow them. And most of the people who buy from them, they're asking for broccoli sprouts. So he, he grows radish, he goes broccoli and uh, fenugreek all these yeah. how old is your son uh he's 12 <laughs> yeah would he like to come on the show and show his business and and talk about it oh he would love to <laughs> wow it's like a two for today <laughs> oh right now no no not right now we'll book an episode in the future oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah he's in school he's attending school upstairs yeah <laughs> that's fantastic yeah so we will open the instant pot where we cooked uh, um, the doll. Ooh. Let me move it a little closer so that your audience can see. Can you see that? I can Oops. see it. And Rachel wants to know, do you use sea moss? Sea moss? No, no. Uh, I'm not aware what that is. So you can see how nicely it's all cooked. And even the, the cucumber pieces have become little tender. See, so 10 minutes is more than enough. And since we soak the lentils overnight and they are also uh, sprouted, um, we don't need more than 10 minutes to cook. Okay, so now I will put this in saute mode and then add, add the moringa leaves. I don't want to cook the moringa leaves that long and be careful if you're using moringa for the first time. It can be bitter. And here, since I added tamarind, tamarind, uh, tamarind tomatoes and the Indian cucumber, that, that gives the tangy taste. It can, it can help with the bitterness of the Moringa. But if you are someone who is using it for the first time, be careful, don't use too much. Okay, so I'll be adding these frozen. These are washed and frozen Moringa leaves. And uh, just mix it nicely. Little bit goes long way. Don't think like you have to use a ton of Moringa, no. Uh, just use a little bit because it has that potent of health benefits. And once we mix that, we'll add a little bit more. Be prepared. It's not easy to remove the leaves from the Moringa stems. It's one of the hardest things I feel. Uh, so I'll ask my kids to do it or when they're watching TV or something, you know, <laughs> do it. Uh, if you try to do it like, like a dedicated work, it, it takes a lot of time to remove the leaves from the stems because they're very tiny, right? So you can see the Moringa is cooking and the other food I recommend in my workshops a lot is cilantro. Uh, yeah, you said before we came on, you tell your students to get 10, 10 bunches a week. 
Yes, yes, yes. Because most of my participants are there because of diabetes. So uh, cilantro has been shown to be so beneficial for someone with diabetes. So it's a must. If you're diabetic, definitely, definitely take cilantro. Not only that, it will help you remove the uh, heavy metals as well. And it's, it's an easy, easy um, green to add to Indian dishes. And I'll show you how it will disappear, okay, in a minute. Um, this is two bunches of cilantro. People might think, oh, that's a lot, but uh, we are not adding salt. We are not adding oil. And these cilantro will help in, you know, increasing the flavor. And unless someone sees you cooking, they won't even know there is that much cilantro in there. So <laughs> that's, that's good, especially if you want to give that to kids. Uh, well, do you think, for the, is there really a gene, pe some people really dislike cilantro and say it tastes like soap, which I don't understand because I've never tasted soap, but do you think that there is really like a genetic thing with people that just hate cilantro? I, I heard about it, AJ. I mean, I heard it. I, I heard those uh, uh, two kinds of people, one liking cilantro, one not liking. Similarly, one liking dark chocolate, the other not liking dark chocolate. So <laughs> there, is, there is a bug in the gut, I guess, which tells them to eat cilantro and which tells not to eat. So, so because we are adding cilantro also, it gives such a nice aroma as well as taste in Indian dishes. You might think, oh, that's a lot of cilantro, but in a minute you will see how it, it's almost invisible. That's how it is with the greens, right? It looks and fantastic. A quick question from Eleanor. Does amla also help with blood pressure? I read a paper saying that, yes, amla also helps with blood pressure. It reduces the blood pressure, yes. Please look on PubMed or even nutritionfacts.org um, if you want to read more about AMLA. Um, yes, definitely, I, I recommend that for my mom because he, she has blood pressure issues. So along with the plant-based diet, she eats one or two AMLAs every day because they're freshly available in India, right? So they can happily get and wash them and eat it. So, but as I said before, none of these uh, spices or herbs or greens or amla will work if you are eating all junk food and saying like, okay, I'll just add amla and I'll be good. It won't work like that. It has to go with not only food, uh, it has to be with exercise, with mindfulness, with stress reducing techniques and healthy relationships. That's what lifestyle medicine stands for, the six pillars of lifestyle medicine. Absolutely. Yeah. Gina says, what else besides turmeric do you not get at an Indian store due to contamination? Uh, hmm, good question, actually. Um, some red chili powders. Um, red chili powder is red in color, so in order for them to get a brighter color, they might add lead. Lead gives bright color to, uh, to many of the spices, right? So yeah, so uh, even the red chili powder, be careful. If you can get uh, organic and reliable source, that's better. We get ours from India. Um, we get dried red chilies and get them pow powdered. So yeah. But most, most Indians here, I know they get the uh, red chili powder from India or a reliable source uh, of organic red chili powder at Indian stores. Yeah, and we are done with this and we don't need to add uh, salt because of all these flavorings. And I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna dish this as well, Chef AJ. People are asking if the Tulsi is the same as holy basil. Yes, Tulsi is holy basil, yes. Yes, yeah. Terrific. Yeah, I know. I, supposed, I hope I'm not saying a bad word here, but I'm supposed to tell you your Bengaroo. Huh? 
B-A-N-G-A-R-U. I'm somebody wants me to tell you you're Bangaru. I can't, guys make don't make me say hard words. You will be pleasant. It means gold in how do you say gold? <laughs> oh, I have to know who that is. That is my language. <laughs> it's Bullient, whose name I'm probably mispronouncing. But oh, anyway. he said that Bangaru? That's what he said. You're Bangaru. Oh my gosh. We say that to our kids when we pamper them. <laughs> yeah, Bangaru so is nothing but gold. That, that's what he's saying. That's wonderful. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. So the amla that you buy, is it fresh or frozen? Somebody's asking. Uh, unfortunately, I, I, I mean, in America, I don't think we can buy fresh amla. So this is the frozen. It's available like a whole fruit or like pieces, whichever is convenient for you, you know? So, yeah. Now is, is cilantro, R R Rani wants to know, the same as danya or dai? Yeah. Dania, yeah. yes. Cilantro is dania. Right. Yeah. And Mary says, what do you usually have for breakfast? <laughs> um, my most common breakfast nowadays is steel cut oats with berries or savory oats with vegetables. Um, or uh, I make like millet dosas with uh, a lot of veggies. We, um, in Indian culture, we use a lot of uh, millet uh, breakfast, you know, millet upma. Um, and then, yeah, I rotate these and sometimes green smoothies. What's a, what's a traditional breakfast like for people that live in India? Um, it depends if they are from south of India or north of India. In southern India, it's uh, idli and dosa is a common breakfast. Idli is like um, uh, steamed lentil cakes. And dosa is like the lentils batter, but then made as a pancake and then stuffed with potato curry and then eaten with chutneys. Mm, yeah. Chutneys are, every, every culture has something that's like a salsa. A ch you know, there's always something that's a sauce that makes yeah. everything delicious. Yeah. Chutney is a, is a big thing in Indian culture, actually. Yeah either it be north or south, you know? Yeah. I'll quickly show uh, once I, uh, you know, played this. I mean, I'll just dish it out. <laughs> so. So this is a quick way of adding greens in your any recipe you make. If you are a big fan of uh, term, uh, cilantro, just add cilantro. It'll add nitrate rich greens. Cilantro is one of the nitrate rich green. Yeah, I usually do that with arugula, but cilantro is a great idea. Yeah, so this is how it looks. And we'll be eating with millets today. Oh my God, you, your, your food is as beautiful as you are. I bet it tastes amazing. Thank you, thank you. Yes, it tastes good. One of these days when everything gets normal, I want to invite you, Chef AJ. Oh God, I, I would love to eat your food. It looks amazing. Oh, Eleanor says, when will the cookbook be available? <laughs> I'm planning end of this year. I have some, some workshops going on in between. So I'm busy with those, but definitely, yeah. I'm hoping end of this year before end of this year. Yes. So the workshops you do, are they just, for, I mean, are any of them in English if people wanted to work with you? Uh, the, the way I started the workshops is uh, I was doing whole food plant-based cooking classes for people in the community, in the community center. That's how I started actually. So uh, after the pandemic hit, I moved them online and have been doing via Zoom. So all these uh, workshops right now are via Zoom and I have workshops uh, online in English, yes. That's fantastic. Yeah. Or Bullion can take years in Indian because he obviously knows some India. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that he knows Bangaru. <laughs> That's fantastic. Bibi says, have you ever been able to find a Preethi type jar mixer source here in the United States if not, what do you recommend as a substitute? Oh, actually, we ordered the Preeti Mixi in India on Amazon, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's the Mixi that's commonly used in India, but we ordered on Amazon. 
Yeah, I have no idea what that, but what is it? I have no idea what, what it's nothing but it's a mixer grinder, but then yeah, like yeah. A, like a mortar and a pestle, maybe kind of where you know, no, no, no. it's it's like regular grind, uh, regular blender. Okay, it's like regular brand blender, but it comes with small, small jars, uh, to blend because we blend our spices, right? So they come in very small jars, medium jar for chutney, large jar for sauces, you know? <laughs> that, that sounds great. And there, I just saw a question from Zahra. What are, again, what are the benefits of Moringa? Yeah, benefits of Moringa are controls blood sugars as well as anti-cancer benefits. And uh, from Jed Fahey's, uh, research, I came to know that it's a sulforaphane counterpart for tropical countries. Um, it removes the air pollutants like benzene in our body and then it excretes. So yeah, and um, as I mentioned before, it, who is uh, pregnant, pregnant women and uh, um, people who are trying to get pregnant, please try to avoid Moringa or don't consume high quantities. Um, it has been shown to be abortofacient. So. Great. And there's a question from Janet. How can I add moringa powder and amla powder to daily foods? Um, smoothie is the best way. If you're not used to Indian cooking, smoothie is the best way. Yeah. But as I said, a teaspoon every day of these um, uh, herbs and spices is enough. It's like we don't have to, you know, go overboard, especially with turmeric. Uh, people consuming a lot of turmeric can get gallstones and kidney stones. So they have to be careful. Yeah. Wow. Well, great. This has just been such a wonderful presentation. Thank you, Chef AJ. Thank I, you. I enjoyed every part of it. <laughs> now, why am I meeting all these wonderful people that live in LA now that I'm not there anymore? Where were you when all <laughs> 59 years that I lived there. So fantastic. Well, thank you so much, especially in honor of Earth Day for the work that you do for being vegan and for adding so much love and joy and beautiful food to the world. Thank you so much, Chef AJ and happy Earth Day, everyone. Please go plant-based and prevent these pandemics. Yeah, yeah and uh, a few, okay, the chat is going so fast, but said, please tell her we love her super interview. And that's because she's, what's the word again? Your garinko. What are you in gold? How do you say that again? <laughs> That's very Bangaroo. sweet. She's Bangaroo. <laughs> yeah, right? That's very sweet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now, don't tell your don't tell your husband that some guy on uh, <laughs> Bangaroo today will be very upset. So, all right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Kotluri. I really appreciate this. It was a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much, Chef AJ. Very and, nice to. And I can't wait to connect with your favorite doctor from India and your son for future broadcasts. Definitely, definitely. We should. Great. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. If you come back tomorrow at 11 a.m., I get is Dr. Jyothi Rao, and she's going to be talking about her book, Body on Fire. She's going to be talking about fasting. And at 2 p.m., I have Kathy Hester. Thanks again, doctor. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.